So, you know what I haven't done in a while? Paint a freaking model. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to paint up that sad, sad little troll who's been sitting on my desk since we sculpted him two months ago now. I really love how this guy turned out, and I feel like he had a lot of character, but it does mean that now I have no idea how to approach painting him. But to start off, I just uh, primed him in the same way I usually do with blue from below and light beige from on top in the Xenothal Prime. However, this time I did use a Vallejo rattle can, and wow. The difference in quality between this and those hardware store ones I use usually is mind-blowing. And I'm cheap, so that's saying something. But now we're back to indecision, as I'm just not sure how to approach this. The biggest area of the model is the skin, so that's the main thing I'm worrying about. And I wanted to set him apart from the other trolls we see in Lord of the Rings, but, but still wanted to keep him in a relatively realistic realm and not go too cartoony, as awesome as that can look, so that he can still fit in with the army. So this led me to spending a lot of time thinking about skin. And in case you didn't know, skin is gross. Looking closely at my own skin, it becomes really obvious that it's just not one color. As there's a lot of variations in color from blood and blemishes and tons of other stuff. And I decided to really take that to heart. I decided I was going to paint this guy in a really fleshy color, unlike the rougher look of most other trolls in Lord of the Rings movies, and more like the horribly disfigured one from the end of the Battle of the Five Armies, Stumpy. As Stumpy is great, we love Stumpy. I wanted the skin to look raw and cold to really fit in with the theme of my army, so I started by picking out four colors. A blue, a red, a light peachy color, and an off-white skin tone. I placed these on my wet palette and proceeded to mix intermediary colors between them to give them a full variation of tones. And then I wet blended these together right on the model. If you don't know what wet blending is, it's basically using wet paint to blend colors together on the surface of the thing you're painting. It's basically an alternative to layering where you put layers of paint on top of each other to get a gradient. This you basically just mix them together. So here I applied the bluer color to the recesses, and while it was still wet, added some red around it, and then blended the two together by basically just swishing the paint around. Next I brought in that pinky color and finally the white. I just went out on the whole body like this, keeping the darker blues and reds to the recesses and darker sections as laid out by the Xenothal highlight, and blending almost up to pure white in select areas, and it was really fun. I also made sure to make sections like the elbows and nose really red to make them look really sore. I spent a good two hours working on this, just going back and forth around the model, adjusting stuff, layering more blends over existing ones until I was happy with the color layout. Then I picked out the other sections in a far more standard way, brown for the cloth, beige for the rope, blue for the earth on the base and the back, and grey for the rocks. As for the antlers and tufts of grass, I actually just left them alone, as they already had a good amount of color from the Xenothal, and I was already happy with them for now. Once that was all dry, it was time to go in with the washers, and I focused on these a bit more than usual. I did the sections of Earth as normal with pure Draconoth Nightshade, a really strong dark wash from GW, but then thinned it down to about a one-to-one -one mix with contrast medium to apply to the rest, as I wanted a bit more control than usual. I focused this on all the shadows and undersections, while on the rest I applied a one-to-one -one mix of Agrax Earthshade and Gloss Reichland Flesh Shade, with a bit of glaze medium thrown in as well. This gave a nice warmth to sections of the skin, and a real coldness to others, which I was really happy with. Once all that was dry, I just went back to my wet palette, as all of my colors from the blending process were still there, and so I just used those and applied them in really thin sections to just clean everything up and give it a last little pop. Once again, for the rest of the model, I did paint it in a really standard way, basically just mixing in more and more off-white, in this case Screaming Skull, to the base colors and applying rough, scratchy highlights. For the base, I dry brushed it in Xandri Dust, Screaming Skull, and a little bit of pure white, before applying the same to the earth on his back. 
And then it was just adding some tufts and painting the base rim and we were done. I really love how he turned out, and it's actually been really fun to basically bring something from nothing to a fully finished and sculpted miniature. And if you're ever looking for some of the supplies I use, like Milliput and Tufts, take a look at the uh, Amazon affiliate links I have below. If you do follow those links, any shopping you do there, whether you buy the actual products or not, will give a little kickback to the channel here, so you can take a little cash out of Big Daddy Bezos' pocket and put it, put it in the into my pocket. Would be nice. But anyway, back to the troll. I really love how just <laughs> utterly disgusting he looks. I'm happy that the colors are still fairly vibrant, but he does fit really nicely into the rest of my army. I have another troll here halfway sculpted and I can't wait to finish him up and paint him too. And in the meantime, this guy is going to be having some fun next week, but more on that a another time. For now, I just want, as always, to give a big shout out to my patrons as your loyalty, patience, and understanding of my utterly disorganized nature has been amazing. And for the rest of you, if you do enjoy the show and want to help keep me doing it, please consider hopping over and taking a look as we've got a fun little group there and got some custom dice and would love to have you as part of our community. But if you don't, that's fine. And I appreciate every one of you who watches, shares, likes, and subscribes. So thank you all again, and have a good one.